this video I'm going to show you a simple step-by-step -step process how to color grade log footage. This is not a masterclass and tailored towards beginners. I'm going to be using only basic tools to achieve the look. But let's address the elephant in the room. Your color grading result will depend on how good your footage is exposed. So keep that in mind. Make sure to watch till the end as I will be sharing something interesting. For our color grading we're going to be using color wheels, log wheels, HSL curves and regular curves. I'm gonna quickly explain what are those and we can move to actual process. Let's start with color wheels. We have lift, gamma, gain. Lift is gonna be our shadows area, gamma midtones, and gain highlights. As you can see on the waveform over here, when we change in gain, gamma, or lift, the waveform changes smoothly. So lift overlaps with gamma, gamma overlaps with lift and gain, and gain overlaps with gamma. So this is the nice way to correct the exposure of your footage. The offset will affect everything at once. So what is the difference between log wheels and color wheels? The difference between color wheels and log wheels that the log wheels have zero overlap. For example, shadow will affect on the shadows. And you can see that you have like a specific knee over here. Same goes for midtones. It's very targeted area of effect. Same goes for highlights. Now I'm gonna show you some extremes. Let's put highlights to minus one and shadows to plus one. See, we have this very interesting drop off, S curve. So now what you can do, you have a range control, right? To, and you can change the area of effect of your shadows and highlights. And I just want to mention that offset stays the same for both. Curves are basically the same thing, but with more control. So the left part of the curves are shadows and the top right are highlights. Let's see what's going to happen if we gonna drag it, right? This is the highlights and this is shadows. Now with curves, we have more control over specific areas and can manipulate image in a more precise way. With HSL curves, we can target specific colors and manipulate them. This is used for fine-tuning the final look or alternate a specific color. You will see what I mean once we get to the end of the color grading process. Now when this is out of the way, let's get our hands dirty. Drag your footage on the timeline, select your hero, go to the color tab. First thing you want to do is to convert your log footage to Rec. 709. There are two ways to do that. You can use color space transform tool or use conversion LUT. Both of those options will produce the same result. Let's start with the conversion LUT. Add a new node, right click with your mouse button, LUTs, and then you have your Sony. S-Log s gamma 2 709 Type A. And we're done. Now I'm gonna show you the second version. You can search for color space transform, drag it to the nodes area. Here we're gonna select our in input color space. In my case, it's Sony S Gamma 3 sign and input gamma Sony S Log 3. Now we need to output color space, which is gonna be Rec 709 and output gamma Gamma 2.4. See, it's literally the same result. The second thing you wanna do is to adjust your white balance and correct your exposure. In our case, exposure is pretty okay, but let's pull it up a little bit. I'm gonna add another node and drag I've set a little bit up. Are we go. So we have a little bit more details and we're not clipping blacks. After adjusting the exposure, we want to correct our white balance and we're gonna use primaries to do that. Also, don't forget to name your nodes. By looking at the waveform, we can tell that we need to pull up reds a little bit more and pull down blues a little bit. So. The good way to see if the white balance is correct, your reds, greens, and blues have to be around at the same level. Also, the waveform a good indicator as well. I'm not even looking at the image, I'm just looking at the parade. Pulling up reds a little bit and pulling down blues a little bit. So all three of those are at the same level. There we go, a little bit better. I think we can pull up blues a little bit. There we go better. Okay, what's next? The next step is gonna be to achieve our look. We're gonna go for basic teal and orange look. I'm gonna add another node, name it, and I'm gonna add teals to our shadows and oranges to the highlights. Before and after. 
It's a little bit exaggerated right now, but we are gonna fix it. Okay, now once we have our look, we want blacks to be blacks, not the black with a tint of blue. And in order to do that, I'm gonna add another node before the look node, and we're gonna use log wheels. By dragging shadows to the opposite direction, we will fix our blacks. There we go. See how this area became black. And you can compare, see, like our shadows are over here and our lift is on the opposite specter. So that's how we compensate the blacks. Okay, what's next? Now I want to adjust the reds on his face and maybe adjust a little bit blues on his shirt. And we're gonna do this with HSL curves, the fun part. And how we're gonna do that? We're gonna pull reds a little bit down. See how his face became a little bit more, you know, natural looking, not that red. But don't push it too hard because it can result to some artifacts. I also want to add more teal into his shirt. Desaturate it a little bit and even make it a little bit darker. So those are hues versus hues. You adjust colors over here. Hue versus saturation, you adjust saturation of the specific color. And hue versus luma, you adjust luminance of the specific color. Disable all of those nodes and see what we started with. We started with natural looking image, added exposure, corrected the white balance, added our look, then made correction of the look, and then made adjustment to our colors. Now the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add curves to add some contrast. Remember how I told you I'm gonna, uh, that you can use curves to target specific areas of the image, and that's exactly what we're doing over here. I don't want his, those highlights to be very powerful. So I'm gonna tone them down. Now we're gonna add some grain. I usually love to use 35 millimeters, 400T. Crank up the grain size and crank up the grain strength. I'm not sure if you will be able to see the difference on the YouTube video, but I definitely see the difference on my screen. Not a big fan of how curves curves looking. And the final piece, I'm gonna add some vignetting. Oh, it's too much, so make sure not to overdo it. Just as subtle. I actually would love to tone down reds a little bit more. The idea is to find a good balance. Gonna desaturate it a little bit more. See how it removes this redness from his skin? Yeah, I think I like it better. Now let's disable everything. So we started with our log footage, added color space transform, adjusted exposure, corrected white balance, added our look, corrected blacks, adjusted colors with HSL curves, added some contrast with curves, added grain, and added some vignetting. So this is the color graded version. This is before, this is after. Before, after. And this is log footage, graded footage, log footage, graded footage. Remember how I told you I'm gonna show you something interesting at the end. Here we go. Let's delete all of our corrections and we're gonna leave only our color space transform, vignetting and grain. I'm gonna show you how to achieve base film look with an existing LUT within the DaVinci Resolve. And this is Rec709 Kodak 2383 D60. Right, we added this LUT, but see, it, it looks terrible. It's not usable. And it's because we have to, to change our output gamma to Cineon Film Log. And we can re-enable our primaries and exposure. And you already have a really nice base. I still would want to adjust his skin color with HSL curves. Now let's compare those. So two looks are fairly similar. The Kodak look is leaning towards the blues and our look is leaning towards the greens and a little bit more contrasty. Now that wasn't that hard, right? 
If you want to speed up your color grading process, make sure to check out my video on color grading shortcuts. But if you just want to make the magic happen, check out my LUT pack, the link in the description below. I hope that it was helpful, and remember, the only way you get better is practice and experimentation. Subscribe and see you in the next one!